Well, hello. God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a fantastic day. I pray that you're walking in the goodness of the Lord. As you can tell, I'm not in my office today. Actually, we're packing up, getting ready to travel back to Raleigh. Last night, we were with Bishop Alvin Moore and the specific Washington State jurisdiction, Washington State jurisdiction in their 96 Holy Convocation, and the Lord blessed us real good, and I was honored to be with the saints of God uh, here in, uh, in Tacoma, Washington. Well, we're going to be on our way home in just a few, uh, an hour or so, but we won't get to Raleigh in time for the service. But listen, don't you uh, worry. God has given me a tremendous speaker who is going to deliver the word of the Lord tonight. And that preacher will be my wife, Pamela. I'm excited about how God is going to use her. And I want you to tune in and I want you to lift us up in prayer that God give us a safe trip back. My friends, as you know, these are turbulent times and the word is out and, and there's a lot of discussion and things going on about uh, things we've had to say. Well, let me tell you, we stand for holiness. I believe that holiness is right. And I want to say to the, all of my friends, I've received texts, I've received letters, I've received phone calls, people saying don't change, stand on the word, stay with the word. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm more encouraged than I've ever been before to preach, stand on, and teach God's truth. The Bible says, buy the truth, sell it not. And listen, the truth is the only thing that will make us free and the truth of God and the truth about God. The truth about God is his identity, his holiness, his morals. The truth of God is God's teachings, God's positions on things. And the truth of God is that we are to stand for holiness and you know the big controversy uh, and I don't know why there's a controversy. I mean I, I've, I've had one preacher to say, tell me that you can't sell your soul because you own your soul. So I guess uh, he forgot that Jesus said to the man who had the barns, uh, thy fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Thy soul shall be required of thee. And, and Jesus said, what is a man profited if he gains the world and lose his soul? So if you can lose your soul, and if Jesus calls it thy soul, then uh, it, it, it is ours, and we can uh, sell it. And many have sold out to the devil. They've sold out to the devil. And I think that that's why we struck a nerve, Brother Rocky, when we, and, and Gary, when we talked about uh, selling the soul. Well, many have sold their souls. Well, I tell you what, I thank God that the God of the Bible saved mine. He, I have a born again spirit. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb, and I'm grateful that God is my Savior and my Lord, and you are also. There, I prophesied years ago that a divide would come in, into the body of Christ. And the divide would be along the lines of doctrine, along the lines of what we believe. And it seems to me that there are many today who no longer believe that holiness is right. There are many today who, who actually believe. I mean, I'm hearing people argue, yeah, yeah, the church girls are having sex with the deacons and the preachers. And yeah, yeah, church girls are doing all these things. Well, some may be. Perhaps that's the way they are in your church. But I know of church girls who are living holy, walking upright, serving the Lord. None of us are perfect. You're correct in that. All of us are forgiven. You're correct there. But that's a far cry from being perfect and, for, uh, and forgiven and promoting wickedness. I tell you this, there are very few church girls who are 10, 11, 12, 13, who are attending purity class, who are who are uh, in, in Sunday school, who are in church, who are being taught that there's a righteous standard. Do we want to tell them, are we now in a position uh, uh, to tell them so that we can defend Beyonce, tell them, hey, this is what church girls do. So hey, 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 little granddaughter, great grand, go on and learn to to twerk, go and learn to shake your behind, go on, go ahead on and learn now to be a body because that's what church girls are. You know better than that. Come on, 
Some of you are behaving as though you were born without a brain. Holiness is right. And there is no controversy when, when, uh, when it comes to holiness. And the Bible teaches without all controversy, without any uh, uh, acceptation, without, without anything. The Bible says, let every man who named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's not controversial. That's bottom basement Christianity. So I've talked, I've talked, got my little, uh, little uh, uh, two cents in there, and hey, I'm fired up. Uh, uh, the Bible is right. We're going to stand on the word of God. I thank God for my church. I thank God for the church of God in Christ. I thank God for our great leader, the presiding bishop of our church, Bishop J. Drew Shear. I've seen some of the things posted as though that Bishop Wooden against the clock sisters and Bishop Shear and all that. That's the devil. That's garbage. I'm not against the presiding bishop. I'm with my great leader. And I thank God, as of our conversations, my great leader is with me. God has put him at the helm of this church. And his cry, his decree, his decree is that we're returning to holiness. And I think it's a holy thing to defend the sanctity of a sanctified song. And uh, I want to say to all, uh, even when God gives you uh, uh, intellectual property, and it's yours, guard it, guard it, take care of it. Don't put it in the hands of evil people because evil people love to take holy things and do evil things with holy things. You remember what the Philistines did when they had uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Their God, Dagon, fell on his face because they were handling something that was holy. Oh my, in the house of Obed-Edom, they had the Ark of the Covenant. Everything grew. Everything prospered because they had the Holy Ark. Well, we have today the Word of God. We have the name of Jesus we have gifts and things that God has given us that has benefited the body of Christ. And so I thank God. Somebody said, uh, did you hear what Bishop Wood said about Twinkie Clock? Well, uh, here's what I say about Twinkie Clock. Twinkie Clock is so great that Twinkie Clock doesn't even need a last name. You just say Twinkie. All over the world, people know who you're talking about. And her songs and her music help keep me saved. I came to Jesus in 1977. And the, uh, the things that God gave the woman of God to write. And even today, we praise God for her. But we're going to stand on God's truth and those who want to create a conflict. I think that the body of Christ is too wise to see through that. I think that the true believer is too wise to see through that. And that it's time for everybody to take a stand. Now I got to go. I got to catch a flight. I'm on my way back home. Praise the Lord. Can't wait to see my wife. Can't wait to put my arms around her. But she is going to minister the word of the Lord tonight. She's going to preach. I want you to join us for Bible study. <laughs> I got you there. Bible study. She's going to teach the word. She's going to preach the word. And you, my friends, are going to pray for her and pray for me and say amen. God bless you. We'll see you if it's the Lord's will this coming Sunday. Thank you.